Hey guys and welcome back to Heartbeat Christian Academy's uh, Computer Essentials and we are already, already at lesson number six and we're going to be talking about input devices and I hope that you're learning something. That is what it's about. This course is not going to train you to be a technician. Uh, there's other courses for that. This course is to train you just to be comfortable and if you remember the last lesson we spoke about uh, the central processing unit the cpu that goes on the main board and there were some questions that i asked or review questions and i hope that you've looked over those review questions and i thought i'd just give you some of the answers um, in in lesson five in the review questions there you can see that uh, the question was what is cpu and cpu stands for central processing unit and then uh, the the second uh, answer there is clock speed uh, because it asked what, what what is clock speed clock speed is the speed at which the cpu can process information and clock speed is measured in megahertz and gigahertz um, and then a microprocessor is is a cpu built on a single chip now that's just some of the review questions if you are interested in doing the exam i just wanted to give you those answers uh, as we're doing a bit of a revision on cpus i mean in a computer everything is interconnected so uh, this is not uh, that you that you have to worry that um, one thing is separate from the other thing now everything is interconnected and today as i said we are talking about input devices uh, there's the banking details if you feel you want to support us and you are deriving value from this course then uh, you are welcome to support us and if you need to contact us you have questions there's the cell number and the email address so let's get into this lecture today as we are talking about input devices and i've, I've just uh, taken some pictures of different input devices uh, so that you can sort of get an idea of what an input device is an input device is any device that actually it puts data into the computer so when i type something on my keyboard so i'm typing uh, richard on my keyboard i'm inputting data therefore it's an input device when i've got a webcam like i've got on here or a camera and the camera is capturing images it's taking it into the computer uh, when i'm using my mouse and i'm light right clicking left clicking hovering over things selecting things the same a touch screen also input because I'm putting data into the computer. Uh, a touch screen coincidentally can be an input and an output device because it's also outputting uh, what you're putting in again. So that's that's a dual device. And then a scanner, you put a document into your scanner or anything that you want to scan in there and you scan it to your computer. And the same with a microphone. Uh, you, you connect this microphone via one of the ports, the uh, 3.5 uh, jack ports or via USB and you start talking and it, it actually takes your voice and it and it takes it into the computer. Uh, the trackball one is, is slightly outdated but it, it's also in there. Uh, so that is what, what uh, when we talk about input devices, that's what we're talking about. It's anything that you can actually put data into your computer. And I don't think that's difficult uh, to know. I think it's it's actually pretty easy to understand and in the manual uh, a lot of different input devices are listed oh, we've got graphics tablets with pens and scanners and digital cameras and all sorts of things uh, but in general terms an input device is any device that allows information to be entered into a computer by typing selecting importing downloading maybe even uh, these days you even have voice activation on those input devices so it's not difficult uh, i've just uh, taken it a step further here to actually show you the input output connectors that's on the board because this is something on the main board that you can understand when, when you start looking at input and output um, if you have to look at a usb port for instance a universal serial bus um, that is a technology that you can plug your printer in your scanner in all sorts of things so a usb can be an input and an output device if you look at a vga where where you've got a screen uh, you, you know strictly speaking it can also be in an output if you're using a touch screen but mostly it's it's used for output and the same with hdmi which is also your your screen connector 
and then your RJ45 is a data connection. So this is what you plug in. As I said, it looked like it looks like a telephone cable, and you plug this in to actually connect normally to your router or to your local network, so that you can share data or um, get onto the internet if you're not using wireless. And then we've also got your audio in and audio out, which is a nice example of plugging in a microphone which you will normally plug in the pin connector there uh, in general terms a line in or a microphone in uh, maybe you've got a mic with a normal jack plug you can plug it in there or you've got speakers where you want to play some music or watch a video you can actually plug that in so uh, but but now at this stage this drawing that i've done here for you or, or it's applicable to both the input and the output devices but for this section you need to understand that an input device is any device that allows information to be entered into a pc by typing selecting importing downloading any way that you can get it in and typical examples they say in the manual is a is a a, a keyboard and a mouse that would be the simplest i've just done some uh, uh, graphics there for you as well just to make it even more simple you see a lot of times what happens is i've got a a, a client that brings in a computer and they've disconnected it at home then they don't know how to reconnect it again and that is sort of just looking at what's in the back here a lot of times they say oh there's like thousands of cables in the back and i don't know where they go but you know what the only one where you can really become confused and and also not always but is sort of the audio ones uh, but they will also be color coded so a lot of times you'll see that the speaker cable has a green little plug and you'll see oh there's a green little plug here and you can plug your speaker straight in there uh, the usb uh, you know they they fit into any of the usb ports so like this motherboard has four usb ports you can fit it in the rj45 cable if you are linking your your uh, computer to your router uh, you plug that in there it will just fit in there and normally the screen cable um, will be the blue screen cable and you'll see oh here's a blue cable and you will play around with it uh, and see if it fits in this way it will fit or if you put it in the wrong way around you you will say okay this this isn't fitting but you'll see it doesn't fit because the the casing doesn't fit that way so you, it will actually prompt you you will feel oh this is going in easy there so once you've plugged in your screen you've plugged in your printers and your scanners and you've plugged in your speakers and your microphone um, and, and your mouse and your keyboard a lot of times I showed you yesterday uh, you get these little uh, USB transmitters that go into the USB port and this talks to your wireless mouse so uh, you know you plug this in and, and Windows detects it and uh, so you know to take your computer uh, apart in the sense of just uh, disconnecting it is is really not dangerous because everything should go in exactly the same way there are exceptions but i will talk to you to to you about that in a in a later stage and that's when you have a graphic a graphics card slotted in on your motherboard uh, you will have additional graphics ports here where the graphics card is actually slotted in and that is um, th that is to actually boost graphics memory and uh, then you won't use the blue port here you will rather use the hdmi or the or the port on the graphics card but that's like i say that gets very technical for this lesson you know I, again i'm going much wider than i'm supposed to go because i want to share the information uh, it, i want to uh, demystify things and i also want you to be comfortable with uh, your computer and say you know what i can take my cables out it's not a problem even if i open up my side cover of my computer and i look at it oh i can see everything that's in there it's it's everything i learned in the course there's the motherboard there's the cpu there's the ram uh, there's the uh, the hard drive there's the dvd writer or the blu-ray writer so i can see everything is there so there's no um, difficulty a lot of times what we fear sort of becomes clouded for us but if we don't fear it and we know it then uh, even when somebody says oh you know what i bought myself a new i5 oh you understand that is three cpus up in the intel range you get celeron duco i3 uh, sorry four and then i5 or somebody said i bought an i7 you say oh that's the top of the range you know what you're buying 
even with RAM, we'll talk about that in, in the following lecture. So by the end of Computer Essentials, you will not fear anything anymore. There's just another example of a, a USB cable going into the computer and then the webcam sort of being mounted on the screen. And interestingly enough, this webcam has a little microphone in it as well. So the USB port actually now supports a microphone and a video signal, which is nice because now if your microphone is standing in front of you or your, your webcam, your audio is going straight into the webcam and the quality is much better because maybe the laptop, the position of the audio is just uh, awkward and uh, you are talking up but uh, you're recording down so you're getting a bit of a muffled sound. But with your webcam and the audio being on your webcam, you can actually then get a better quality sound and you have your image and it all goes into a USB port. Yeah, you've got somebody drawing on a tablet and I, I've seen a lot of people actually giving classes this way in Zoom where they want to make some notes and stuff for students. So this is a tablet that connects to the computer via a USB port into the back of the computer. And now it's an input device. They can actually now write on that and give some illustrations so that the students can actually see exactly what they're doing. I just wanted to sort of give you some more information so that you know exactly what's going on and that you don't feel uncomfortable. And then uh, the only thing you need to be able to do is explain the term input device. So that's very simple for this lesson. And then also you have to uh, just say what is a scanner used for. And um, maybe you should say what is a flatbed scanner used for because this is when you want to scan documents or photos uh, into your computer. So it's a, so you're bringing data into the computer via the scanner. Um, but that's um, fairly, fairly simple to answer. So we're going to also be looking at output devices and we've spoken about a few of them. But I hope you will join me for lesson number seven. And then we will do a, probably do a review lesson in number eight. So I, I might do seven and eight ag again together to do the review. And uh, I hope to see you in lesson number seven when we talk about output devices.